welcome back to our channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. If you're new here, this is something I do with my husband, Chris. We take thrift store found items and we repurpose them. We give them new life here on our channel and we share the process and the vision with you all of what we do to these items to get them ready to resell. And we resell them here locally in an antique mall. So in today's video, I will be bringing you a trash to treasure. I'm going to take some I have quite a hoard of embroidery hoops. I think I'm a little bit behind the times. I think a lot of YouTubers have been doing this. I've actually done this before. Um, I can share that link of just repurposing an embroidery hoop, taking some drop crop fabric, doing some stenciling, doing some stamping, what have you. Just sharing with you what we have laying around our homes. I don't know about you all, but I have been very blessed with my clientele giving me embroidery hoops, so I have quite a hoard. So yeah, I needed to get some of them done. So I hope you enjoy today's video. So I know, I know, I'm behind in the game and a lot of YouTubers have already done this, but as a crafter, you just, there's not enough time in the day to get every craft you want done. So I have now accumulated quite a pile of stamps. So I have lots to choose from to do these embroidery hoops with some drop cloth fabric. So got some new ones in here. Got my old ones, see that they don't stay stuck, but we'll deal with that when they, we get to that. And yes, I have quite the stash of embroidery hoops, and I have to be honest, in my hairdressing career, I have lots of people bring me random embroidery hoops all the time. Now I've already tea stained, coffee stained, dyed my drop cloth lemon, that I've done lots of videos on that if you want me to link some and then those are flower sacks that I actually thrifted towels that I thrifted months ago so when I started off this project I thought okay I'm just gonna do three Yvonne just do three just do three 10 inch malls I had done I would think I'd done these over a year ago I had done some on my channel made them for the booth and uh, they, they were kind of they didn't really sell but you know that was that darn virus and things were open closed whatever I have you I think it was a trash to treasure video so I'm like okay be calm do 10 but when it came to the 10 inch embroidery hoop I had to really figure out what was going to fit inside there I like that I aged my drop cloth I did iron it oh my gosh drop cloth is not the easiest thing to iron nor does it want to stay ironed it has that perfectly imperfect kind of look but I love how it aged so now I'm just trying to figure out what my pocket these little wall pockets that I'm attempting to make this now that once I've done before I did not make pockets out of so I'm just kind of figuring out where I want the pocket to be how much fabric I want to make sure that I have enough fabric that when I cut it off that I'm going to be able to slide the other part of the hoop over each other that I have enough fabric that it's not going to make a hole. So to be able to use that home sweet home I needed a 12 inch embroidery hoop. I was so blessed to have Melissa Morrow of the Vintage Bee. She has an online store. She has a cute little shop in Florida and she also has just started a YouTube channel. So I will link her down below for you so you can check her out. So now that I know that I'm going to have enough fabric to cover my embroidery hoop. Remember the embroidery hoop has the two pieces. You're going to slide it uh, over the top of the top piece and then put that second piece down nice and secure so I want to make sure that I leave just a little bit I can cut some off I just can't put it back on now just because you have an idea in your head does not mean that you're always going to be a, to, able to achieve it so I really I've been wanting to use my curvy stamps like this but I struggle because every time I want to use them I don't the item that I'm doing is not big enough and I do have oval embroidery hoops I'm not going to get into those um, those ones for me did not sell when I put drop cloth linen in them and I ended up selling them at my garage sale so when it came to me deciding if I was going to use these I would have had to get a much bigger embroidery hoop and so I I'm not I have not yet to got to use these I just wanted to do welcome that's all but it just it was too big so now I'm gone to my next letter. So let's see if I can make this fit inside. That's the thing with st stenciling or cutting out a stencil on your Cricut, your silhouette. The silhouette Cricut, you can make it fit by doing the stencil, but I'm doing all stamping today, so I'm not messing with that today. So I'm going to find 
one of these stamp sets that I can achieve welcome. So the big letters ended up being, the capital letters ended up being too big also. So I ended up having to go with lowercase. So I just always like to share with you all that, yeah, it doesn't, what I want to do doesn't always, I can't. And when you're an adult, you were supposed to be able to do whatever you wanted to do, but we all know that is not the case. Don't you like my name plan? I started out with three 10 inch embroiderer hoops and I have quickly upgraded two of them already. So now I'm gonna do some of the animals. I'm like, oh, let's stop messing with these words that aren't fitting in places. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one of the cows. And I have these little letters from Amazon that I'm going to be using also with the ones that will fit on there. And on the pig, I got to actually downside. He got a nine inch embroidery hoop. Now to give this just a little bit more and make these stamps pop just a little bit, I'm going to go in and I know you're all surprised. I'm going to be doing some grain sack striping on every single one of these pockets. <laughs> so I'm going right in and trying to find center right off the bat with my first piece of Dollar Tree masking tape. For you that already know how to do grain sack striping, go ahead and fast forward it if you want. But I always treat every video in case somebody is watching this for the first time. So if you ever wonder why I'm repetitive with it, it could be somebody's first time ever watching how to do grain sack striping. So what you do is you got that middle piece, that is your center piece, and then you lay one piece of tape on both sides, and then you take that center piece off. That's where you're going to have your first paint stripe on. So I'm using Apple Barrel multi-use paint and just a makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree. And then I, when it comes to grain sack stripes or painting on, excuse me, painting on drop cloth, drop cloth's not really a smooth, it's kind of bumpy. So you just kind of have to work with your fabric. I don't want it to be a solid white. It's It takes a lot of coats to get it actually to be a solid white. So what I'm doing here is I'm just doing that dry technique, just has a little bit of paint on this makeup sponge. And I'll kind of go in every direction, just kind of hitting those bumps. It won't look like much why you have the paint on there, but once you take that tape off, you'll be able to see that stripe really nice. now when it comes to that second stripe what you're going to do is you're going to move that over how much space you want to be unpainted in between your next stripes so I'm just overlapping as you can see there's like a quarter of an inch and then so I'm overlapping on both sides because what you do to one side you got to do to the other side and so I I'm really an eyeballer when it comes to doing my stripes and so then the same thing I'm laying another piece of tape on one side and then the other side and that empty space is where you're going to put that next paint stripe now I'm going to go ahead and lay my stamps down. I want to see where my centering is. I want to see where my spacing needs to be. And then I will go ahead and um, put the embroidery hoop up over it, making sure that I have enough space, how far up I need to put the stencil, how even I need to put my leaf pattern. So as you see right here, I am using some... <laughs> double stick tape. I am struggling with having stamps stay sticky. So I hope you all stay for the bloopers at the end because there was a lot of bloopers in this video. I, I just edited them out and thought I'm just going to go with it and I'll add them on to the end. And these are a brand new stamp set. They would not stick to that flexible mound. So somebody gave me the tip of two, you know, the double stick tape. So I'm, I'm rolling with it. So now I here I am using the stays on ink and black to get my letters all inked up. I've got my center point. I, lo I do love these flexible mounds because that way you can really see your letters with that grid line. Unfortunately, I do think that the double stick tape is taking the grid lines off. The struggles are real sometimes, but so I'm just making sure that it's centered, making sure that I'm not sliding it side to side and really making sure that I'm pressing it, giving it a good 10 second count at least to make sure that that ink is getting transferred onto that fabric. So now I need to make sure that my embroidery hoops opened all the way up. So there's that little screw at the top of it. So make sure that it's opened all the way up. I left the seam across. So that's gonna make some thicker sides for this to fit into. So I'm putting the one piece that doesn't have the screw part on the bottom, laying my fabric over the top of it. And then I'm now I'm trying not to pull on it too much. I just want to make sure that it's going to stay centered and then slip that other piece of embroidery hoop over. And then there again, making sure that I am 
my little screw part is centered in with my grain sack striping as best as I can and then just gingerly pulling it on it because you don't want to pull it so tight that you're kind of ruining your pocket and deforming it. So now I can go ahead and tighten my screw back up and now that I have everything in place and I'm going to push on my embroidery hoops just to make sure that they are level and then I can go in with some fabric scissors and cut off the excess fabric. So yes, I am going to be using double stick tape on every stamp I'm using because there is nothing more frustrating than getting a stamp all inked up and then having it drop on your fabric. So just for the security, that worked fine on the first one, so I am going to go ahead and keep on using it. So we all have ways of doing things and we all have to do them in the order that we like them. So this is just what's working for me. I want to put my stamp set in um, where the embroidery hoop, I want to see how, how I'm getting it nice and centered, what I feel is going to fit into the embroidery hoop. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it on that flexible mount. And then I'm going to set that off to the side before I do my grain sack striping. So yep, every single one of these is going to get some grain sack striping. I just think that's going to make the image pop a little bit. So now I have the striping on and now I'm getting ready to make sure that everything is lined up. Just double checking it one more time before I go ahead and get it all inked up. Now when I did this one, I really should have centered the cow, the C-O-W, with the grain sack and not underneath the cow, but I only have so many pieces of fabric, I already had it done, so this is the way she's going to be. She's going to be off-centered C-O-W. Hey, it is, it is what it is, it's how crafting works. So maybe next time if these sell well and I make more, I, I'll change it a little bit differently, but now I'm just really rubbing on that, making sure that I got all the pieces of the parts of the cow, cow transferred onto the drop cloth fabric. One thing I do want to share with you that as I, when I first printed on this with the coffee tea stain dye fabric and having the grain sack, I kind of thought it looked a little bit light, but as it was absorbing into the fabric and drying, it actually dried darker. So if you do this and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have an image, it's not really there, it actually does as it's drying gets gets darker. I just wanted to share you because I was a little like, oh my gosh, don't tell me I'm going to have to stamp over a stamp because that's no fun. So I'm going to be repeating that same process. I am a creature of habit. Sometimes crafting tells you how it wants to be crafted, but I really do try to keep a pattern. So the same thing, getting my pig down there, getting the PIG down there, and then grabbing on that flexible mount. I did find that I needed to tape on the bottom and tape on the top so that my fabric didn't move around because I was taping on the sides first and if you know anything about cutting drop cloth fabric, it will just fray. So I'm like, oh, I only cut enough to be able to fit on that embroidery hoop. I do not want to be wasting it by my tape pulling it apart. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna be adding any lettering to the chicken. The chicken is nice and tall already. So yep, there I am again with that double stick tape so it stays on my flexible mount. And the same thing with the sheep. I'm not gonna put any lettering. I don't wanna make it I'm not really sure how these are going to be selling in our booth. I do this is a craft that I wanted to I've done similar. I wanted I love I have the ones that I did previously, they were stencils that I had cricketed out. So it was kind of fun to get to be able to stamp on these and do the green sack striping underneath them. Why, yes, I do want to take an opportunity to use the new stamp set that I got from Birds Got to Fly. So, yep, I'm going to be using these flowers in that kind of dead space in the middle underneath the welcome in, a, in the leaves. I'm beginning to have trust issues with <laughs> um, stamp sets. So, I, yep, there again, I'm going to be using the double stick tape. And then once I transfer it onto the flexible mount, I can go ahead and adjust the letters where I need to be. I put the E at the end to make sure that I have the spacing that I need it to, that I need. Even though I'm kind of off centered, off camera, you can kind of see that I'm just making sure that the letters are all in one level line following one of the lines on that grid.
To go back in and do that E, I just took some clear gift wrap tape and just grabbed it and then eyeballed where I needed to put it and then just rubbed it on. I felt like that was the easiest way. So can we take a moment to de-stress from stamping and do a thrift flip? So yep, I have these two little, I thought they were just like coat rack hooks, but then once I got them home, after I showed them in my thrift haul, they were two for $4.09. I, I think maybe you were supposed to hang candles or something that dangled off of them, but I'm going to change them in to something that you could put a robe, a coat, your purse, a bag, whatever. So of course, you know me, I have to take off that those Hobby Lobby tags. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove that hanging system on the back. I'm going to be reusing these are in one. I think they were, I seriously, I think they were brand new, but I'm going to change them. So they're going to hang the other way. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these hangers. I'm going to go ahead and flip around and remove these hooks off. So there's not, they're in perfect shape. There's no reason to have to respray these at all. So you probably think, what the heck is she doing? Well, I'm going to make a matching set. So if I'm going to do grain sack striping on both of these, I could have done them individually, but you know what? I'm going to match them up. I'm going to center where my ruler is, and then I'm going to run masking tape down both pieces at the same time to do my grain sack striping. You can't really see both pieces at the same time on camera. So yep, see, I just did both pieces at the same exact time. I'm going to do the Timeless Gray Multi-Surface Apple Barrow Paint. I'm only going to, as you see, the pieces are already distressed. So I'm only going to go in and do one coat of this. course I would use the last piece of masking tape and but you know what I'm not running to the craft room right now I'm in the process I have this half inch tape out here anyway so I'll just finish this one little project just using that piece Well, that was oddly satisfying doing two pieces at the same time and I, I, this is the break I needed from that stamping. So now I'm going to go back in and place these like a coat rack hook. So I'm just recentering these using those same screws. I'm just going to do a simple number one and a number two, just make these a little matching set using the typesetting stamps from IOD. Yep, I'm going right back to the stamp sets. They're not going to win. I guess I'm competitive even with stamps. So I'm going to go ahead and yep, I'm going to still be using that double stick tape to make sure that they are going to be nice and stuck and that flexible mount. And then I'm just going to be changing the number one out for the number two, keeping it right on that flexible mount, and then rearranging these so I can make sure that I'm going to be nice and level in case somebody's going to be buying. I probably will sell them separately. Maybe somebody will buy them together. So just in case, I want to make sure that they are nice and level. That's where this the, I like that flexible mount because of the grid pattern. So I'm just double checking my measurements, making sure that the bottom of my end matches up with the bottom of my end. Then I'm just going to flip these around and go ahead and replace that hanging system on the top side. So it's going to hang a different way so that you can use it for like a coat rack bag, what have you. This was just a nice, simple thrift flip, I think. Now on to our third and final craft, y'all. I'm sure you're like, get to it, Yvonne. Okay, so as you see, I have already tea stained, coffee stained, dyed these. Look at February. I thrifted these back in February. It's about time I get this done. So I, I actually like the little bit of the linen color a little bit better than the bright white, personal preference. I'm going to make sure that my tag is at the top. I Once you ink on these, they should be washable. I washed them before. Um, when the tea stain died, that's a little bit questionable. I haven't really ever had it come out when I washed them on cold, but these are more of a decorative towel, just something pretty to have hanging in your kitchen. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making sure that I 
am centered. These flower sack towels, they're not, the edges aren't completely square, so you just have kind of have to do the best that you can. I'm just taping down the edge so when I go to do my stamp that it doesn't slide on me. And I actually did take, I um, do have a piece of vellum that I use underneath the stamp set so I don't get my cute little Cricut mat all stained up. So now to do the flower sack towels, I'm just going to do the animals, whatever I did on the little um, pockets, wall pockets. I'm going to go ahead and do little animals, but this time I'm going to switch out. I wish I would have thought about that when I was doing these. I have those Tim Holtz animal stamps that I just absolutely love, and I love that little flower feed sack. So on the bottom of each one of these animals, that is what I'm going to do for these towels. I don't know if it's the hot, humid weather, but my hands are getting sore from rubbing these stamps, so I actually went and got my acrylic block to help me rub on these stamps to make sure that that ink is transferring onto the fabric. Okay, so I began to love the stamps again. I didn't have any problems using that double stick tape. So I thought, okay, I said I was only going to do three. I lied. So I'm going in and now I'm just taking one of the pieces of the leftover striping and I'm doing a couple of these where it just has the slash sash across it. So I'm using that same set stamp set that Melissa was so nice to send me. I absolutely love Bless. I actually sold a Hobby Lobby piece that was brand new, similar to what I'm making. I thrifted it and was able to resell it in my booth. And so I'm like, well, maybe they'll like my version of it. So that's what I'm going to go in with this Blast. And just I have that edging at the bottom. I folded over the other edging so I know where my Blast is going to be where I can stamp it on. you do the same exact thing you put it on top of that solid hoop and then slide that other hoop that has the screw part in it you just have to decide do you want it straight do you want it off center do you want it however it's visually appealing to you but i know that i'm going to be adding a little bit of floral to it so i want to pull it over to the one side So look at, I actually found these at the Dollar General. Then going to the Dollar General a little too much these days. But these were only a dollar. They reminded me of lamb's ear. I know they're not lamb's ear. I am, I liked them because they were pretty. And then it's, I am still working off these cotton ball heads that I bought at Christmas time. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to snap each of the individual leaves. I know somebody will be so kind to tell me what this type of plant is, but to me it Reminds me of the lambs here with the furry, and I think this color goes very well with cotton. So before gl hot gluing these in place, I'm going to get a visual of what I think is going to look nice with my leaves and my cotton, and then try to remember as I'm going back at it, gluing it on. So I'm just using uh, some hot glue and gluing just on the stems. You just glue where you feel like you need to, because the they're, they were a dollar, so they do need some help with some of the leaves. So where some of the leaves are crinkled, I'll probably just end up gluing those down if they are showing. For this arrangement, there was just something nice about the centering of a three of the cotton balls. Trying not to overlap my leaves on my blast and just getting that nice and hot glued down and of course i had to go into the craft room again and get another glue stick what would be a craft if you actually had all your supplies near you okay just one more just one more you guys i'm just gonna do this home sweet home i really wanted to do a welcome but i just didn't want i don't have that bit i don't know i don't know so i'm just gonna go ahead and do one more with a home sweet home because i could just see somebody putting this on their front door i really wanted a welcome i just i wanted it to be fancier letters but maybe i can find some maybe cur cursive letter ones that are a little bit smaller so i don't have to make such a big embroidery hoop so same process as before this one the wording was a little bit longer it took up the entire space so Placing a little bit of that cotton and this flora on there, I had to be a little bit creative. So I'm starting off with the stems glued 
from the back as you see i flipped it over put a little bit of hot glue on that stem that way that i'm not filling up all the space in the front i don't want to cover up my lettering So the nice thing about crafting is you just keep doing whatever looks appealing to your eye. When you love it, then you know that it's done. So I'm trying just to use one of those stems to keep it cost efficient because I... Luckily, the embroidery hoop was free. The doll, it was a dollar for this um, floral. That's the leftover piece of drop cloth fabric. I got some ink on there and I got a stamp set, which the stamp set, as we all know, are not cheap. So I do, I do appreciate using them. So I'm trying to keep my cost down because I really don't know how these will sell or not. But And if they do, then I can make some more. But I probably, yeah, I ended up making more than the three. So I just keep adding that floral in there, gluing down. Like some of those leaves are folded over. So I'm sticking a little hot glue up to make them be straight and pretty. And then to me, I think one little piece of cotton at the top one little piece of cotton at the back and maybe a little bit more of the greenery to fill in yet again i'm just going very gingerly i'm not going to go at it crazily because i don't want all of a sudden to be like covering up the wording and yes yes i did just take the tip of that and cut it off that's the way i can control that i'm not going to use that whole stem so it's not covering up that stamp now I do have a little bit of greenery I will add in to the ones with the words. I tried some greenery on the animal ones. I did not like it. I don't know because I made the pockets so high. Maybe the pockets were, eh, it tastes personal. So I do have this, I, yeah, I, th I don't even know what this is. This was just something, yet again, it was at the Dollar General. I really, it caught my eye and I thought it was really pretty. So I think it coordinates very well with that white green sack striping. So that's what I'm going to edit it. I'm just going to cut those stems apart and then just make it as full or not as full as I visually like it. And then the welcome one, I'm going to go ahead and do some of this, that $3 something Walmart lavender that I has still been hoarding on. So I'm not going to go crazy because I, I have not seen any more at the Walmarts that I've been into. Not that I don't over go always go over and check it out if I go into the store. So I'm just, yet again, you just keep adding it to what's pleasing to your eye. And I always like to go back in with some of that. That stem has all that greenery. I am not going to waste that greenery. I paid for this whole thing. So I'm just going to go in with some hot glue and then glue some of that the greenery in up towards the top of this lavender just to give it a little bit more depth and definition, a little bit more color.
So I hope that you stay to the end of the video, the very end of the video, because there is some bloopers. Not every craft always turns out. And this one, I have done embroidered hoops. I've done drop cloth fabric. But why do things have to be difficult sometimes? So I thought, you know what? I'm not even going to put them in and explain them to you. I'm just going to add them as bloopers at the end. So I hope you enjoy the very tail end of this video. And I, I hope I have inspired you. I hope if you walk away with one inspiration, one thing that you didn't know, learning one thing from one of our videos makes doing these videos well worth it. So I thank you so much for watching today's video. And as always, if you are part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. We had just recently reached 40,000 plus. So thank you so much. It just means a lot. And if you're checking out this kind of content for the first time and you liked what you saw, hit the subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we'll see you next time time guys bye oh hate 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 loathe i don't like anything about what i just did oh my gosh you got to be kidding me did you guys just see my stamp fall off well that was another fail you can't even see it and nope it didn't match up at all it's got that blurred vision going on well she, I didn't put my grain sack striping down first. Oh my goodness.